Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Level Up with Lee. We've got a great guest today, Ms. Ramika Ford of the Ford Realty Group. Hey, Ramika, how are you doing today? I'm great, Lee. How are you? I'm doing very well. So good. let's start, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Okay. Um, well, I am from Atlanta area. I've been here pretty much all my life, um, besides college. Um, I live in the DeKalb County Avenilla Estates area, and um, I'm married with a daughter and um, just been doing real estate for now about 18 years. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, you mentioned uh, here in Atlanta, except for going to college, where'd you go to college? I went to Florida and you. Florida and AM University. Fam, you. Oh, Rattler. All right. Okay. Down in Tallahassee, the, exactly. the, the city of Hills. Okay. Nice. Nice. So, what led you to a career in, in real estate? So, you're out of FAMU, you're, you're doing your thing. Uh, what, what led you to a career in real estate? Well, you know what? I've always, I always knew that I wanted to get my real estate license. However, um, okay. I didn't get it until after college. Um, and uh, I started at um, Bank of America briefly, and um, then I went to okay. work for a real estate attorney's office, and I had already been working on getting my license. So I knew before college that I wanted to get my real estate license, but I just chose to get, get it after um, going to college. So gotcha. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what started it. Okay, gotcha. Now, the question I think is on everybody's mind, and we're seeing a lot of it, and when I talk to clients, it becomes an issue. Home prices have gone up and just literally skyrocketed during the pandemic. Um, so why are some of the reasons that home prices are going up so much? Well, I mean, pretty much it's just, I mean, supply and demand. So the demand is, is definitely here as far as, you know, having low inventory. And um, we've been in a seller's market prior to the pandemic. So we were already in a seller's market for maybe like, you know, three or five years prior to that. However, I think um, just when the pandemic hit, we didn't know which way it was going to go. So what happened was the inventory seemed like it gotten even lower because people were scared to put the homes on the market or they, they didn't know what to do. So at that time, um, it just went crazy um, as far as people just bidding over pricing, um, you know, bidding over the list price and things of that nature. So that's basically continued for the market to kind of, you know, keep going and the pricing increasing. So that's basically what ended up happening during the pandemic. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, one thing I think I've heard from a, a couple of places is this idea that, you know, you've got people from, I'll say, New York or Chicago that have maybe moved to areas like Atlanta and they look at the prices of the houses here in Atlanta and just think, you know, compared to what I'm used to, this is still cheap exactly. and have a, a greater willingness to, to pay more for the houses. Is that something that you're seeing as a result of people maybe being a little bit more mobile? From the that pandemic? Is, yeah, that is exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing people from, like you said, California up north, and they're coming here and saying, okay, hey, this is, you know, for this price, we can get this for this amount, and it's extremely cheap. So we're having them come, and they're actually, you know, paying the price and paying over for the housing, whereas, you know, people that's already here, it's a little challenge for them, because, you know, now the first-time home buyer prices has, you know, instead of being 150 it's now, you know, over $250 um, starting out. So, it's a lot harder um, just because people are coming here and they have cash and they're paying cash and they're paying, you know, if, even if we're over appraisal, um, as far as going over it on the houses, they're paying a little bit more um, and they end up having, you know, they have cash flow because they're selling their homes up there and it, it's easier. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. Now, so do you think we're going to continue to see the, the prices go up on houses, you know, this year, next year? What, what, now I know you don't have a crystal ball, or at least you <laughs> haven't shared that with me, but um, assuming you don't have a crystal ball, do you think the price is going to continue to go up on us? I do. I wish I did have a crystal ball. Um, but I do think um, we are, you know, thinking that prices are going to continue. Um, it just seems like it's a cycle of basically, um, Atlanta, you know, kind of leveling out and actually the pricing keep, you know, increasing instead of it actually going down or anything. This may be our new normal. Um, so it, it does seem like the pricing is kind of here to stay. Of course, you know, it, like you said, with the crystal ball, of course, you know, something major would have to happen. Um, but for the most part, it looks like these prices are kind of our new normal. Gotcha. OK, so now I'm going to ask you a question that might be a little touchy amongst what I would describe as traditional real estate professionals. But, you know, we see these commercials all the time about the new way to do real estate in, in Open Door or Redfin or some of those things. Hey, what do you think candidly about some of those types of, of companies and, and uh, 
why should uh, our, our viewers choose working with someone like yourself, aside from that great smile versus open door? Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, that is a little sensitive. Um, <laughs> we've, um, you know, we call these companies and, you know, Zillow and open door, you know, distractors, you know, they come into the market and they distracting things. They're trying to, you know, shake some things up. Um, and um, it's, it's, you know, it's somewhat good and somewhat bad. Um, the good thing is, you know, they come in and they kind of help, you know, home buyers out sometimes when they don't have to do repairs or anything like that. The, you know, the thing about it is they still offer, I mean, they put like, um, you know, these hefty prices as far as they automatically have a 5% and then they have their repairs on top of it. So what you end up thinking that you're getting for these pricing, um, you know, if they offer, you say, we're just going to say a $250,000 house you sell and they may come in and offer you two eighty. dollars However, they have a, you know, $20,000 on top of that. So realistically, you're only getting that same amount. Whereas if you go with the realtor, you actually, or, you know, um, they put it on the market and we can actually, um, you know, get, get you the price, the list price plus more, um, just being in this market um, without having to, um, you know, pay those, the different repair costs and all that, you know, different things that come up. So it makes for an easier, quicker sale, they say somewhat, but at the same time, it's the relationship and it's the um, ha actually having that connecting experience with the realtor and, you know, a lot of people, whereas it, it's just like, okay, you send me some, your property, show me some pictures and we're going to sell it and you're stuck with that price. So yeah. it just depends on, you know, what's your preference. So. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Now, one of the things that I seem to remember hearing before is that uh, maybe if you're going to try to sell a house, you should sell in the springtime or maybe in the summertime. What are some of those things that we should look for? Is there really a better time of the year to, to try to sell your home uh, than another? Yeah, I think for years, I mean, people always thought, you know, you want to put your house on the springtime. It needs to be ready for spring or, you know, market um, for summer. Um, just because, you know, it just really depends. Um, right now, it doesn't matter. You can go any, I mean, <laughs> November, December holidays, it does not matter. However, you know, um, typically people want to be in before the school system, um, before, you know, the new school system starts. So that's why a lot of people move right after the school year ends. And then, um, you know, within that spring or summer market, because it gives them a little bit more flexibility for families and things of that nature. So it's still a great time. But however, I would say nowadays, any day is a good time, any month, um, you're still going to right now, we're just, I mean, we're needing home. So it, it's not going to be a good time. Uh, I mean, it, you know what I'm saying? As far as um, springtime is not just the best time anymore. Um, it can be fall, winter, summer, spring. It doesn't matter. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Now you mentioned school. So uh, are homes that are in certain school districts, uh, is that still a really big driver of where people are looking or has that changed much that you've seen during the pandemic? you know what, um, better schools are always going to drive. Um, it doesn't matter as far as, you know, of course, with the lim um, inventory, people, you know, still need homes in different areas. And some people are still, you know, going to private school and different things of that nature. However, um, there's always been a trend to see that, you know, um, schools in better districts, um, well, homes in better districts, um, as far as the school system, they're going to go a little bit faster or, you know, the pricing is going to be totally different. Um, however, like I said, um, you know, right now it's just, it, it depends on what people want. Do you want, you know, a bigger home and, um, to be in this, you know, school area, or do you want to, you know, have a smaller home and it be in a better school district? So it, it really just depends on the area and people's preference. So. Gotcha. Okay. Good deal. So now let me ask you a, another question. So like a lot of people, I imagine that, that, that may be watching. Uh, I, and then primarily my wife, but I, I sit there with her some nights and, and I'm watching all the different shows on HGTV, yeah. flip or flop. Well, let me ask you, do you watch and, and do you have a favorite on HGTV? Hmm. I, I watch HGTV. I don't have a favorite. I watch all of them too. Okay. Um, just kind of see what, you know, what's going on and what people are doing. And especially because it's not only giving, you know, um, just the Atlanta market is giving, you know, some other cities and states and stuff. So I do, I enjoy it um, just because I, I love real estate. So I will watch it. And, um, okay. you know, it gives people, you know, I don't know, sometimes it's kind of a false intention, some, you know, but I mean, it's, it's a great show and it, it you know, I, it's, I mean, well, all of them are great shows. So, you know. Gotcha. Okay. So now we watch these shows and we see people, 
you know, maybe they're going to buy a house and, you know, add on a, a bathroom or an, a new thing that I've learned, an ensuite. I didn't, you know, it's like, oh, I just thought they meant a bathroom, but okay, we've got an ensuite. Um, are there some things that if you're looking to sell your house at some point down the road where you actually generally get, you know, your money back, if you will, in terms of the investment. So, you know, maybe I spend $5,000 for whatever sort of upgrade to my home, but that doesn't necessarily result in the home value increasing. So what, what sorts of things should people look at if they really want to try to increase the value of their home or should they even bother to do it at all in the, this current market environment? Oh, well, I mean, um, there are several ways. So pretty much um, kitchen and bathrooms are always going to be win, um, mainly because those are the higher ticket items as far as doing re repairs. Um, so if you can, always, you know, do upgrades to your kitchen and do upgrades to your bathroom, it's going to always be a winner um, that will really add more value onto your homes a lot of times. Um, in this day and time, you know, sometimes it necessarily didn't necess have to be that you do any um, rehabs or anything. It, just a nice, clean home right now, um, because a lot of times now people, because they are watching the HGTV shows, they want to go in and they want to do their own things. Um, so it necessarily didn't mean that you have to, you know, do all the repairs. But if if I would suggest, you know, for people to where they where they put the money at, I would say kitchen and bathrooms are going to always lead to your bigger returns. OK. Gotcha. Now, so kitchen and bathroom. And again, watch a lot of these shows and uh, there's a there's a new show. Well, I think it's a new show. It might not be a new show, but one where you've got a situation where somebody made some improvements to their home and maybe they had a bad contractor. As a real estate professional, do you provide assistance to your clients with, hey, listen, here's somebody you can work with to do some repairs or upgrades on your home and, and I think he or she is a reliable firm to, to work with or is that something you just kind of leave off the table? No, no, no. I, I recommend all my vendor. I have a total a, a vendor list of, you know, electrician, plumbers, um, painters, everything that I, I can possibly, anything I can think about in a home, um, I, I suggest those to my clients um, just because it makes for an easier, um, <laughs> easier transaction. Um, so therefore it's, um, it's a lot easier. Of course, you know, people will go on and, you know, say, okay, well, I have somebody that can do this for cheaper or things of that nature or somebody that I've seen some work. So I do, you know, suggest, Hey, let's get a co couple quotes in, let them come in and let's see their work too. Let's see what they can do as well as we need to make sure they have some references. Cause a lot of times, you know, people are just saying they can do all of this stuff. And you see a lot of court cases where people are having to go to court because they didn't do what they promised. So, but I do offer a full, full vendor list for my clients um, on, you know, for pretty much anything, anything and everything. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Now we, we've spent a, a fair amount of time talking about, you know, people selling homes, but you know, there's always somebody on the other side of the table, so to speak uh, in this hot market. Cause you know, I've talked to some people that, have done all sorts of things, including baby pictures, if you will, um, in their sales package to try to gain an edge. Is there any kind of advice you'd give to people uh, to get some sort of advantage if they're trying to buy a home in this ultra competitive market? Or is it really just simply show me the money and none of those other things seem to matter? Mm -hmm. I do. I think um, I think show me the money is very important. But I do think um, as far as buyers, just to be ready and realistic, um, and when I say that, I just mean, um, because you know, the inventory is so low, um, don't go in and ask for the world because you're not going to get it. You know, as far as closing costs, you know, nobody's paying closing costs. They haven't, and they, you know, and now they sell are saying, okay, well, why would I, why should I have to, my friend didn't pay it. Um, we or, you know, somebody down the street, they didn't do it. Um, so because so many people are talking, it's just like, okay, you need to be realistic on what's going on with the market and, you know, do your homework. Um, don't, like I said, don't ask for everything. Try to, you know, go in with um, quick due diligence days. You need to have your financing in place. Um, it needs to just be a good, clean, solid offer. And you need to be ready to, you know, if, if something comes back on your ins inspection, you may have to do some of those repairs. Whereas, you know, normally the seller would have said, okay, I'll offer you, you know, some kind of concession in order to, you know, make it worthwhile. Now they're saying, okay, well, I'll just put it back on the market and let another person comes that they they want to um, you know do some do it and I don't have to pay for it. So I'm mean, being realistic because it's so many other buyers out there. So you know, like I said, just doing your homework and basically being ready to to buy and being serious about what you want. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. Okay. Now, let me ask you another question, and, and, and it's somewhat related. One part of the, the situation is being ready, and, and part of being ready, uh, the phrase I, I was told a number of times by somebody in the market is being a ready, willing, and able buyer. So for most people, again, some people coming from different areas of the country are, are paying in cash, but for the rest of those who are having to go through the process of obtaining a mortgage, interest rates are starting to go up. Uh, I know we're fairly early in that cycle, but have you begun to see issues where people can't buy as much home as they could before? Uh, or does it seem like that's really not much of a factor so far? Not just yet, I wouldn't say. Um, however, I think that that, that, it'll, that will happen this year um, because for, you know, for a year, for a few years, our interest rates have been low. So they could go in and can afford, you know, things. Um, so I just hadn't seen it happen with my buyers yet, but I can see that that probably will be happening soon um, because there, I think uh, a few weeks ago, the rates have gone up just a tad big and we're scheduled to go up, you know, a couple more times this year. So I'm, I am telling my buyers to go ahead and let's, you know, prepare to see, you know, what we can do right now before it goes, before it does go up, because that will happen where you may gotcha. not be able to qualify for the same amount just because that interest rate has gone up already. So okay. I think that will happen this year. Okay. Any other thing that buyers should do to prepare themselves to be able to buy a home? Ooh, um, I definitely think as far as like um, savings, saving, saving, saving uh, money, okay. <laughs> that would be one thing because you need to, you know, like you said, be prepared and be ready in order to, um, to be ready for, you know, to do whatever, you know, if you have to pay it for whatever, if you don't, you know, in order to not say, um, to have to do any repairs to the, I mean, to do repairs to the home, um, you know, things of that nature. So I would say um, definitely savings and, um, you know, just doing the homework as far as knowing where they want to go and, um, you know, what's important. Um, and I mean, if it, is it a school or is it, you know, do they have to have a basement or, you know, things of that nature. So I definitely think, you know, say do your homework, find out the areas that you actually want to be in. Um, but for most part, you know, definitely make sure that your credit score is high so that you can try to get as the, the best rate that you possibly can and definitely have your down payment and your savings together. So therefore you'll be ready. Gotcha. And, and is there sort of a, a minimum credit score that people would need to have typically in order to be able to buy a home? Uh, yeah. or, or what are some of the factors around that? Minimum, um, normally, I mean, because people say, oh, you can buy a home at 580, but it's so much stuff that comes with it. It's so, um, okay. you know, so uh, like a standard um, credit score, I would say between like 640, 620 and 640. Normally, okay. with those, you can at least get you, you know, your, um, you know, a decent loan and um, you know, your rate should be okay. Of course, you know, in order to, you know, go conventional or something, you normally need to have at least a, you know, 680 above or whatever, but as the higher you can get your credit score, the better. That would be the, the all time thing. I mean, like if, if I could tell you to work on anything else, it would definitely be to have your credit score as high as you can possibly have it and to have your money set aside. Okay, okay, gotcha. Now, so let, let's have a little fun. You're a real okay. estate professional and you sold hundreds of homes and you've helped people buy hundreds of homes. And I know you spent most of your life here in Metro Atlanta, mm -hmm. but if we had a magic wand and said, you know what? I'm going to buy a house in what place and tell our viewers a little bit of what that house might look like. Hmm, if I was going to buy a house. Um, yeah. Anywhere. Right? Anywhere. anywhere. Hmm. Where, if you could buy a house anywhere you wanted to, where would it be and what might it look like? I have a few places. Um, oh, okay. I just was talking to a few, couple friends about this. Um, so um, one place would be California, just because the okay. California homes are just like, dreamy <laughs> okay okay um, as far as gotcha. being, you know open and just you know you can walk out to the pool and it's so much sunlight and things of that nature um okay. but, um one of my other you know places um i'm actually in the process of doing is actually buying a um, home over in dominican republic so just by basically being able to buy a um uh, you know rental property somewhere else where we can my family can go and then i can actually rent it out and stuff too so Something near the beach, something that's, you know, like lots of sunshine and uh, open area, you know, everything that we see on TV that's like, oh, my goodness, you know, gorgeous and everything. So between California and just like, you know, a few of the, you know, um, out of the country areas. Okay. Tropical areas. Okay. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. So, 
you, you bring up a good question. So, you know, for those people that might be watching and thinking about buying uh, some property in another country, are there any things in particular that they should look for that are different than say, hey, listen, I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, I'm going to buy a new home versus I'm going to buy a home in the Dominican Republic or Bahamas or, or any other uh, foreign country. Anything else they should look for in particular or be careful of? I wouldn't um, necessarily be careful, but I mean, well, I guess um, it's, it's different in different places. Um, it's, and when you're doing over um, out of the country, it is as far as the financing is a little bit different. So you would have okay. to have the financing in place and then, then having the cash flow um, just because it a lot of things are, are, are totally different when you're buying um, in other places. So gotcha. um, that okay. is definitely something to consider um, just, you know, as far as the financing, thinking about that. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. So now, Mika, we're here towards the end of the show. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you think our viewers should absolutely know as it relates to buying a home or selling a home, particularly in this competitive market we got? Hmm. I think we cover pretty much everything. Um, okay. I think for the most part. Um, Good deal. I'm, I'm going to give myself a B plus then for asking good questions as well. Yeah, you asked so. a lot of great questions. All good the hard deal. questions too. <laughs> okay, good. Good deal. So Mika, again, thank you for being on with us today. Uh, look forward to having you on again. And uh, until next time, be well, everyone. <laughs>